AtlantisBC.com. Adam Schefter joins us. Shefty, good morning. How you doing? Good morning, Andrew and John. Happy morning, Wednesday morning to Philadelphia. <laughs> yes. It's it's been a uh, an interesting week, Adam, because we're we're coming off of a win, but and we saw some yeah. great things and we saw some not so great things, and we've gotten more information. As the week has gone on, Nick Sirianni has said now a couple of times in press conferences that he is indeed still calling certain plays, not just telling Kellen Moore that he wants to go for it on fourth down, but he himself is calling the plays. Um, Should we have expected that going into the season when they brought in Kellen Moore, or should we have expected what we did, which was Kellen Moore's got full control of play calling duties? So you thought Kellen Moore had full control? Is that what you thought? Yes. Yeah, it's kind of what we, we Sirianni so, even was, told us before during training camp. He kind of talked about it that way. Well, I, I think what happens is that may have been the plan, but then what happens is, you know, Nick's background is in offense, and so he, you know he's going to be listening in. He's going to be uh, observing. It's not like all of a sudden he has something to Eddie's to say. You know, well, I know this is Kellen's offense, so I'm going to just stay out like. He's the head coach, and that's his background. So if he wants to get involved to some extent, that's always going to be his right. Well, when you, um, s- you say to some extent, though, Adam, it's like uh, Kellen, Moore's, Kellen Moore's engineering a drive, calling the plays. They get down to a fourth and one situation, and they even call a timeout. And Nick Sirianni mm-hmm. then at that point says, no, Kellen, now I'm going to pick the play. That's where it is. It's like I think that everybody was expecting Nick to be the guy to say, Let's go for it here, and then for yep. Kellen to pick the play. Right. Well, again, and I don't know the machinations of how the first three weeks have worked, and it would be unfair for me to come. If, again, you could observe certain things and you listen to what they're saying. Uh, so, in other words, based on what you're telling me, Nick has had basically next to no involvement, and then he just steps in and calls a play when he feels like he wants. Is that what you're saying? That is pretty much what he's confirmed. That it's yeah, Kellen, so. that Kellen Moore is calling the plays, but then at the yeah. fourth and one play the other day where they got stuffed right before he decided at that point, not only did he decide to go for it, but he chose the play. Yeah. And again, now we're in a spot where I, I, I'm going to guess that that's probably a little bit unusual. Like, um, you know, people do their jobs and they're left alone to do their jobs. And it would be weird, like, all of a sudden, hey, you, you can – Reporter information, but I'm going to step in and do this story here, right? Like, right. What, what, are you, what are you doing, right? Like, you guys are doing all these times, but when there's a big story, oh, we're going to bring in somebody else to, to dissect. It, yeah, that, that, if, if that is what he has confirmed and that is how it is working, if those are all true, that is a little unusual. And I, I don't have to say that. I mean, it's... it's um, Let's see how it evolves. Let's see what they do with it. it, it has, has Kellen Moore addressed that? He has. And, and he's, con- and he's, he conf- and he's, he's confirmed it. He said it's it. a collaborative effort. Yes, it's a collaborative effort. And he goes, and sometimes, he even said that sometimes Jeff Stoutland will call a play. Which I, I can't Which I do not believe true. for a second. I do not believe yeah. that for one second. Mm-hmm. Well, look, uh, whatever it takes to win, <laughs> it's their situation. And I've spoken to coaches on staffs. Certain staffs that aren't happy with you know, how games were called at various points. That's happened. Uh, if Kellen Moore were drinking truth serum, uh, my guess would be that you can't be pleased that somebody's stepping in and overruling you, but uh, if, if everybody feels like it helps and it's successful and you win the game and everybody's good with it, then, then great. But so- Kellen's the one, I guess, that has to be good with that, right? Sure. Yeah, he'd have to be, and I know I understand. Nick Sirianni said, "I'm the head coach. I, I, you know, I say, you know, what we do." But we also know Adam that Howie Roseman and Jeffrey Lurie are very involved. So if this continues to become a problem, because let's face it, the Eagles are a Saquon Barkley drop away from being three and zero. I can also say there are a couple of other things away from being one and two. Right? The, the, oh, that, that, that's how tight the two, you know, weeks two and three have been for the Eagles. If this continues to be a problem where Sirianni is involved as much as we are finding him out to be, can Howie Rosen and Jeffrey Lurie midseason, not fire, but take another thing away from Nick Sirianni? And if they do, how does that kind of trickle down to the locker room? You know, these are hard questions to answer because, I, you know, we, we 
and we have an idea of the dynamics, but how that's going to play out and how these guys are going to, I think that's hard to say. Like, again, I think what happens is if they're winning, everything, you could look the other way on everything and you could justify whatever it is that's happening. But if, if you're losing, the season's going south, then it seems like there's an awful lot of ways, there's an awful lot of uh, fireworks and landmines there that people could be stepping on here. Can you um, tell us whether, when you hear this, whether yeah. that is traditional best practices in the NFL? That's how it's usually best done? Pra- best practices are whatever it is, whatever it takes to win football games. And so, and every case is different. That's, that's why it's hard for me to answer. These, like, I'm not in on these meetings. I don't know exactly how this is working. I know you're saying it's working like this, but I guarantee it's a lot more nuanced than that. And so it's hard to really, for me to speak directly to this, I, I'd have to really kind of make some calls and ask various people. I'd love it if you would. <laughs> because, well, because they've addressed it Sunday afternoon, yeah. Monday afternoon, and Tuesday yeah. afternoon, the coordinators did. So it's not like we're talking about something that they haven't. When we talk about nuance, it's something yeah. they've addressed three times now. I got it. That, which is, so, they're, so it's very strange what they're doing. Well, if they're winning and it's working, it's fine. If they're not winning and it's not working, it's not fine. Like when I'm watching that game on Sunday in New Orleans, I got to be honest. <laughs> the one thing that was on my mind was I'm like, oh, my God. Philadelphia is going to be just a woo, woo. Hey, it kind of is, and they won. And we were, but <laughs> and we still kind of are, that. Adam. And, and the segment on Wednesday, oh, those guys are going to grill me here. Like, that's what I was thinking. I was watching, like, it, that, that was that was messy. I'm glad to be on that your mind on, on a Sunday, Chef. See, that's nice. That's <laughs> oh, yeah. good. It's good to know. <laughs> that, that was messy. Like, I'm watching this going, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here we go. And to their credit, they pulled it out to their credit, but boy, that was that was going to be an ugly loss if it went the other way. Yeah, and and let's talk about that. So uh, there's a lot of people that come out and say, "Hey, a win's a win," and and I agree. Look, two and one that's that's huge for your division lead. That's huge for eventual conference records. Especially you beat the Saints, so that's a conference opponent. But could there be a feeling in the locker room like, "Yeah, we won, but." I know it's early, and everyone says the preseason and the continuation of the preseason, but did we not just see this last year? Uh, mm. Again, Andrew, we're on to a new year. So that last year's last year. And so, you know, here, here's the thing. Like, they had so many opportunities to take control of that game, and they didn't until it seemed like they wouldn't. <laughs> like, it looked like they were done. And then they weren't, but they should have had the game control. And then, and the bottom line is they won the game. That's all that really mattered in the end. And you won in New Orleans. And by the way, what we were talking about last week was now they're going to a place where they've struggled to win games recently. They, I think they had lost their last three games there. They hadn't won in a while. They're playing a team that looked in the first two weeks as good as any in football. Oh boy, doom and gloom. How are they going to work it? They won. They won. So they should be credited with that. Now, it wasn't pretty, and it should have been easier, and there were a lot of interesting uh, situations during the course of the game, but they won. It's all that matters. So if you find a way to win on the road, you remember what happened. Everybody's going to remember what happened, and you move forward. Because, again, as I'm watching that game, I also was thinking Tampa Bay's getting smoked today. Tampa Bay is not going to be the place you want to play next week. If Philly loses today, then they're going to Tampa for a, a really tough matchup next week before a bye. And what would your city have been like had that team lost to New Orleans and then gone into Tampa and lost? Coming off the of losses to Atlanta, New Orleans, Tampa? Well, we know, oh. that, we know that Bill Belichick and LeFou, his assistant, would have been uh, stalking the head coaching job. They don't have to stalk anything. I think, I think people know where they are. I think that, they don't have to stalk. yeah, on the sidelines. Yeah, they're on the <laughs> sidelines of Monday Night Football. 
And Nick Sirianni's got to be saying, this guy is sort of publicly making it known that he wouldn't mind this job. And then he's on the Eagles' sideline on Monday Night Football. I thought that was terrible. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. When, when has Bill Belichick made it publicly known that he would like the Philadelphia Eagles job? He's, ta- he's talked about the, the uh, great or- – hey, hey, Bill, what's a great organization in the NFL and everything? Philly's first one out of his mouth. Who's an executive that you really res- – I like Howie Roseman. I mean, it's like mm-hmm. you can say things – come on, Adam. You can say things without saying them directly. Mm. You don't believe that? I would say – but what I would say to you about that, John, is do you think that Bill Belichick needs to lobby for a head coaching job? Well, I think he would have liked this job last offseason. Well, so, I, I, so I say, so I believe he, I believe he might have lobbied for it last offseason. Do you not believe that he did? You don't believe he? I, I don't believe. I don't believe Bill Belichick needs to lobby for a head coaching job at all. I get, I get what you're saying. If, if, if they want him, they'll get him. If he wants yeah, it, he they can want get him, they yeah. can get him. Exactly, exactly. He doesn't have to say or do anything. Like, you, you make it sound like he's desperate for Look, look, Bill well, Belichick, let's be clear. Look, he, 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 he would like to be a head coach. He would like to be a head coach in 2025. I think everybody would agree he's doing something because, A, he likes to stay busy, he loves the sport, it keeps him present in it, and it keeps his face out there. Bill Belichick doesn't have to lobby for any job. Okay, but wait a minute. They, he was a free everybody agent. Everybody knows where he is. He was a free agent last off season and didn't get a job, man. I mean, so yeah. Every team that right. had an opportunity passed on him. So you don't think that maybe his ego is like, hey, 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 I'm still here. Let everybody know I'm here. Definitely, definitely not. Definitely not. I mean, wow. Well, definitely not. Wow, I've never seen no. him. I've never seen him so charming or so visible in my entire life. Well, that, that's his job to be that right now. That's his job is to be on the media. Like his job is to be on TV. You, you're going to go be like, we're on to Cincinnati. It doesn't work like that. Okay, that, you, you can't keep saying that on the Manning cast or McAfee. It, that's not going to work. Okay, you, we we got to get a little bit of explanation. We got to get a little bit of cheer. We got to get a little bit of color. Like, you know, he, he's adjusting. He's adjusting his attack like a coach would to. Be reflective of the job that he's trying to do. But look, last year he was a finalist for the Atlanta job. A, a, a lot of people around the league thought he was getting the job, and then the Falcons, in the end, pivoted and went a different way to Raheem Morris. Washington discussed Bill Belichick, and you talk about the openings. It it, it just didn't work last year because Seattle had an older coach and wanted to go youth. The Chargers were focused in on Jim Harbaugh. Who were the other? Carolina. Bill, he wasn't going there, and they wanted some young coach to go fix Bryce Young. Good luck with that. Yeah. Tennessee also wanted a young. They just had Vrabel. They wanted to get some young offensive guy in there. Like, it didn't match during the coaching cycle last year for Bill. Okay? So, by the way, if Dallas or Philly had made a change last year, I'd be shocked if Bill Belichick wasn't front and center as a top candidate for those jobs last year. But neither one did make a change. And so here he is again, sitting on the sideline. We're speaking to Adam Schefter on the Comcast Business Hotline. Shefty, uh, forgive me if something's already happened. I just haven't seen it anywhere uh, if they haven't yeah. yet, are you expecting financial punishment toward a couple players from the New Orleans Saints? Uh, because there are a lot of Eagles fans yeah. outraged by what happened yeah. to Devontae Smith um, mm-hmm. a couple times. Darius Slay, of course. And there was also a play where Saquon Barkley scored the touchdown. And some of the one of the linemen on uh, New Orleans actually looked like he tried to twist his ankle. Uh, so I'm curious, are you expecting some financial punishment? Yeah, uh, yeah, they got to hit Devontae Smith. That that that's that. I I, I don't know specifically the other plays, um, but th- there will. I'm sure there are going to be some financial penalties. Which okay, they come. That, that's going to that's going to make people feel better. The guy was fined, you know, eighteen thousand dollars, whatever it is. Right. About it. Because I mean, uh, people hit. people just people will be happy for the, that. There's justice, but it's not like they're going to get suspended. No, they're not getting suspended. Right. And. uh There'll, there'll be fines, but that'll be it, and and we go on. So, you know, and then I'm going to guess, and I could be wrong, but I'm going to guess Devontae Smith doesn't play this week. 
So they lose Devontae Smith for a week. Um, he gets a massive head blow. Uh, you know, that, that's, you know, unfortunately, that, that, that shouldn't be a part of the game, and I'm sure the league will address that. Fines are, you know, they're issued later in the week, and the league then announces them on Saturday. Okay. Sometimes they get out Friday. Sometimes. Um, so, but there'll be action taken, I'm sure. All right. Uh, follow up to that. You said Devontae Smith. You you almost expect him not to play this weekend. AJ yeah. Brown is still up in the air. Uh, there's been reporters here yeah. locally saying he might give it a go. Uh, mm-hmm. Curious. John has been saying this, and John, I'd like you to tell Adam. You're willing to take a loss if yeah. it means two more weeks of of AJ Brown. Do teams think that way? Yeah, I'm. I'm I Adam. I, I advocate. I, I'd be totally fine with giving AJ Brown an extra week if there was even any level of risk right. that he could do something that would that would cause more injury. Well, you know, but here's the thing: when they're making an injury decision this weekend, whether it's on AJ Brown or Devontae Smith or whoever it is, you have to think about it. Like, okay. If we don't play him this week, he's got two weeks to rest up. So, you know, if, if A.J. Brown's hamstring isn't right, you, you don't want to rush that. You know, you want to give him the two weeks and then bring him back after the bye. And if Devontae Smith hasn't cleared protocol, he's not going to be allowed to play. But even if there's any question, like, that was, that, that was a major blow. Like, to me, I, again, I think it's usually m- most players who are in protocol, most, at all, it's not. There's not some uniform rule, but most players don't typically clear the next week. They just don't. And so, knowing that you know it, it's going to be close at the very least, and you get a buy. Now, wouldn't you want the guy's brain to heal for an extra week? Yes, sure, right? absolutely. So, yeah. So I, I don't know anything. I'm just using common sense. I, I, my guess is we don't see Devontae Smith this week, and they'll see how A.J. Brown's doing and make a decision with the idea that there's a bye next week. Absolutely. Shefty, we appreciate it as always, Thanks, man, Adam. and uh, we can't wait to talk to you again next week. Well, I, I you know, I, I love to go all Freud on the coaching staff and the machinations of it. It's just awesome. <laughs> I am, um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to ask around. I'm, Do I'm that, gonna ask would you please? People. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious to know like, if it's as, as, as alarming as, a, a trend as alarming a situation as you guys have portrayed it to be. And if it, well, and and we'll if it isn't, back next week. And if it isn't, no, you can come on. You can come on tomorrow and tell us. You know, you guys are idiots. That's true. We're fine.